Hello my friends, today I'd like to talk about ceremonial magic and is it happening in the Capitol building with our Congress and with our Senate. Now, we all know that a mace is normally considered a weapon of destruction or a weapon of violence. However, um, there are ceremonial and magical weapons. And in this case, there is a mace. And they assume symbolic importance that transcends their martial purpose. And it comes to represent the power and authority um, their possessors, the people that hold it, have over others. And at times, these ancient weapons were always seen as mystical, magical items endowed with supernatural properties. And that's important because these things were created for that purpose. They were designed with the purpose of connecting with the supernatural in mind. Maces were closely associated with the earliest Egyptian rulers. They could be used to crush an opponent's skull in close combat, but were also seen as important symbols of Pharaoh's strength and supremacy. Some ancient examples, such as the approximately 5,000-year-old mace head of King Narmer, were not intended to be used in battle at all, but were explicitly designed to serve as ceremonial or votive objects. Now, what's a votive object? A votive object is an object um, that is offered up to a god or goddess at a sacred place. So these maces were being used towards their god, whatever god that they may be, and it was done at a sacred place. So what they're telling you by Congress holding a mace, a symbolic magical mace, in a symbolic magical place, that they are conducting ceremonial magic that dates back pre-Egyptian times and at least two Egyptian times that we know of for a fact. And I don't think most politicians or normal Americans or people around the globe even understand or know that Congress has a mace. And it's... It, it's there, the Speaker of House, it belongs to the, pretty much the Speaker of the House is supposed to be the one that endows the power of the mace. But guess what, my friends, it doesn't work that way. Now we're all familiar, well, most of us, maybe you're not, most of us are familiar with the story of the sword and the stone. And if you're not, here's kind of how it goes. I'll paraphrase it as best I can. There's a sword stuck in a, a stone. And he who can pull out the sword will harness the magical powers, the divine powers, the powers of ruling, the powers of a king, the powers of a god that this sword will wield. Everybody from all lands all over the globe come to pull this sword out, but none can do it. Not the strongest man, not the strongest woman, because it's not their place to do it. They don't have the magic within them to pull out the sword. It has to connect on that level. It's not their sword to pull out. So we have this mace, uh, the one that's being viewed on, on, if you're watching this, where you can see the video, you can see the mace uh, on the screen. And they think that because they are in possession of it, they, they wield its power. However, it's kind of like the sword and the stone, they do not. The mace will be wielded by the right person or people to wield its power. And that power comes from the Constitution, and we the people are the Constitution. We the people are the power. That power is rightfully ours and not theirs. Okay, and in case you are not watching and, and you are only listening to this podcast, then I will describe it to you. Um, the design of the mace is derived from an ancient battle weapon and the Roman fasces. So it's basically a fag, um, which is a bundle of sticks. 
and it's a ceremonial mace. It's 46 inches, 120 cent centimeters high. It has its 13 ebony rods are what consist of the fag, and it represents the original 13 uh, colonial states of the Union, um, bound together by silver strands crisscrossed over the length of the pole. The rods are bound together by four crossing ribbons of silver pinned together and held at the bottom and at the top by silver bands, caps pretty much. And these bands, caps are decorated with floral borders and a, a, a repose design. The name W.N. Adams Manufacturer, New York, 1841 is engraved in the cartouche located in the front center of the bottom band. The shaft is topped by a silver globe, uh, four and a half inches in diameter and engraved with the seven continents, the names of the oceans, lines of longitude, lines of longitude and the major lines of latitude. The western hemisphere faces the front. The globe is encircled with a silver rim marked with the degrees of latitude on which is perched an engraved solid silver eagle with a wingspan of 15 inches. The total weight of the mace is 10 pounds. And there's a procedure for it. The daily session of the house, the sergeant of arms carries the silver and ebony mace of the house in front of the speaker in procession. And there's that word procession again, right? We, we uh, learned that word in an earlier podcast of mine. Uh, about the grand year, the great year, the procession, that's 76,888 years. We would not have that except for when we seeded this planet with the moon, uh, which is uh, communicating in real time today, right now, with the pyramids. So if you haven't checked that episode out, I suggest you go check it out. And this is why the pyramids are important. And the ceremonial thing, ceremonial magic is important because it dates back to then. And as you can see, our rulers have not really changed their ways. So in accordance with the house rules, I'm sorry, at, at, at the procession to the rostrum, and when the house is in session, the mace stands on a cylindrical pedestal of green marble to the speaker's right. When the house is in committee, it is moved to a lowered position on the pedestal next to the sergeant at arms desk, more or less out of sight. Thus, members entering the chamber know immediately whether the house is in session or in committee. So it serves as a functioning tool, it's ceremonial, it's magical, and there's a procedural process to the entire thing. This is, disciplinary usage is in accordance with the house rules. On the rare occasion that a member becomes unruly, the sergeant at arms, upon order of the speaker, lifts the mace from its pedestal and presents it before the offenders, thereby restoring order. Now, we don't really see this very much in, in a lot of our committees and in a lot of our um, uh, sessions. What we see now is more of the hammer, the gavel, and, and the banging of that. Um, in, in, in the major sessions right when everyone goes to the big room and and we need to look and you will see it sitting there and that's when people will know and that's that's really what they're talking about here it's a shame that we've gotten away from um what our hired elected voted people in should be doing but they're not and the symbol of the mace may be used by speaker of the united states house of representatives during press conferences and official communications. Um, and this is when Nancy Pelosi would start wearing it as, as a pin or a brooch uh, on her on her vestitude. So she also wore it on, on the floor when she was trying to impeach Donald Trump. So, you know, they try to invoke the magic, but as you can see, they have no power over their magic or else the things they were trying to do, if they were just and right, uh, would be done. And if we get into a little history of, of the mace, it was created in one of the first resolutions of the U.S. House of Representatives of the first Federal Congress on April 14, 1789, and established the Office of the Sergeant at Arms. And so that's really what the mace represents, is the Office of the Sergeant of Arms, and it's ruled by Congress. The Speaker of the House wields its power. 
The resolution stated, a proper symbol of office shall be provided for the Sergeant of Arms of such form and device as the Speaker shall direct. The first Speaker of the House, Frederick Mullenberg of Pennsylvania, approved the mace as the proper symbol of the Sergeant of Arms and in carrying out the duties of the office. Um, it's an amazing thing. If you haven't really seen it, I suggest you, you, you know, Google it and uh, take a look-see at it. It's a beautiful piece of craftsmanship. It's a beautiful piece of artwork. But let's face the fact. Our government has been conducting in ceremonial magic, dating back to its inception, pretty much. And do we, does anyone even know this? Are, are, were you even aware that Congress had such a device, such a tool, that they had a mace, and that it was implemented and used in, in this way? What are your thoughts on this? Now, Congress very well is in possession of the mace. Of that, there's no dispute. But they don't hold the true power that the mace has, the true magical, divine, spiritual power that it wields the person, the bearer of the holder that has it. We need to get the right people in office. We need to vote out the duopoly monopoly. They have hijacked this country. They're all, I wouldn't say corrupt because some people are doing the right things for the wrong reasons. If something is based on a lie, but that person doesn't know it's based on a lie and they're putting their heart and soul into something that they think is 100% the right thing to do, but it's based on the wrong reason, they don't know they're doing wrong. We the people are the ones that vote our representatives into power. And the fact that the duopoly monopoly is still there means that most people tend to just think that that's the only way they can vote. And that's what really needs to be changed because that's the stranglehold on America. That's what's suffocating this country. And the two-party dictatorship is playing monkey in the middle with the American people. How long will this continue? Well, how long are people going to continue to do what is considered insane and to be considered insane it's doing something over and over again expecting to get a different result is that not what people are doing when they vote democrat and republican over and over and over again so this magical ceremonial mace is in the capitol building waiting for the correct person or correct people to be voted in to wield its power to return the United States back to the intent of the founders. The power is there. We just need the right people in office. Thank you for listening.